Since 1963, the United States Navy has trained dolphins for all kinds of defensive tasks, such as defending submarine bases, protecting aircraft carriers and warships, rescue missions, locating underwater mines, recovering sunken objects or capturing enemy frogmen. And why does the Army use dolphins with their advanced technology? Because nothing that man has invented surpasses the detection capacity of marine mammals. Look at this image. It's a bottlenose dolphin jumping out of the water during a U.S. Navy training exercise in the Persian Gulf. And this thing you see on its fin is an advanced remote camera. Bottlenose dolphins are better and faster than any machine at detecting mines. And this efficiency is due to the fact that its sonar is very advanced. Dolphins and relatives such as killer whales emit a series of sounds that bounce off objects in the environment around them. Mammals pick up the returning echoes and form an acoustic image of their surroundings, an ability known as echolocation. And of course, although man has created his own sonar, as I told you before, it can never be as efficient as the one created by nature. And satellite images have been leaked showing that Russia has stationed trained dolphins at its Sevastopol naval base, with the idea of protecting its fleet from a possible submarine attack by the enemy side. And this is not recent. In 2019, marine specialists in Norway found a beluga whale in their seas that they believe was trained by the Russian Navy. This whale was wearing a tight harness that put Norwegian authorities on alert and sparked speculation that the animal may have escaped from a Russian military installation. St. Petersburg team was written on the harness strap, which also had a camera mount. And it was concluded that the Russian naval base in Murmansk was involved. Unfortunately, the use of animals in wars has occurred since time immemorial. To give you an example, in ancient times, during the Second Punic War, Hannibal and the Carthaginian generals used hundreds of elephants in their fight against the peoples of the Iberian Peninsula and the Roman legions. This general was an innovator in war history. The Sea of Marmara was the scene of the first documented action of the use of biological weapons. Hannibal's tactic was to launch snakes at enemy ships from catapults, getting them to surrender when surrounded by these poisonous creatures. But despite social and technological progress, it seems that exploiting animals for senseless warfare will not stop happening. Like the 2,000 attack-trained horses being used by the Taliban in Afghanistan. Or the 1,600 dogs that work alongside U.S. Army soldiers performing such vital tasks as detecting explosives and locating targets. But at least in this case they develop technologies to protect their canine assistants, such as this soundproofing system that will protect them from the high noise to which they are exposed in these dangerous tasks. Fortunately, animal armies are also formed for non-war uses. Look at this army of ducks. By now you know that China is the world's factory and practically everything we can buy today in our cities comes from there. But what you probably don't know is that in addition to floats, cell phone cases and nose, anything you can imagine, they also export services like the one you see. There are thousands of ducks devouring plagues of locusts. And to combat these crop-devouring insects, countries like Pakistan or Thailand contract China to send them huge quantities of ducks. These birds are trained by the Chinese to become expert locust eaters and can kill these pests in a single day. That's why farmers in China herd ducks like sheep. And there are so many ducks that they stop traffic every time they go out for a walk. All the ducks go in an amazing orderly march, making quite a curious spectacle. Leaving pedestrians and drivers stunned by the amazing organization and obedience that animals show when traveling through the streets. And besides, the farmers assure that they never return home without any of them. Everyone always comes back safe and sound. The surprising thing is that they are able to count so many ducks when they return to make sure that none are missing. How will they do it? Will they pass the list like in school? Mateo, Santiago, Alejandro. But forming armies of animals to fight pests does not end here. In ancient times, on a small island in the south of Japan, called Ayashima, the main activity was to produce silk. And of course, hundreds of thousands of silkworms were needed for that. But this attracted thousands of mice that became a terrible plague for the locals, who saw their houses and barges invaded by these annoying disease-carrying rodents. To combat them, they began to introduce cats and more cats, which ended up forming a whole feline army. And yes, the kitties put an end to the plague, but things soon got out of control, 
as nature took their cause until they outnumbered the population itself by 20. Currently, this island is one of the areas in the world with the most cats per square meter. And well, there they continue to reproduce huddled in abandoned houses, strutting or fighting over the daily loot of local fishermen. The island is becoming so internationally recognized that tourists from all over the world come every year excited to see the famous Cat Island, also called the Heaven of Cats. And many of these cats are waiting for your arrival to be fed. Asian ingenuity never ceases to amaze the world. In October 2021, in the midst of the global health crisis, the Chinese government deployed an army of geese along and across its land borders. Wait a minute, army of geese? It was an effort to prevent the virus from entering China through illegal immigration. And I'm just as surprised as you that such an important responsibility was assigned to geese. But apparently Chinese domestic geese don't need training. Once they establish their territory, these five-pound birds defend it fiercely. Geese alert when a person tries to cross the border illegally because they are very sensitive to sound, screaming when there is a small disturbance and screaming even louder when they see strangers. Although the use of geese to guard cities seems new, it is actually a very old practice. Historical records are replete with stories of battalions of geese, including a pack credited with sounding the alarm and saving Rome from a secret Gallic invasion in 390 BC. On a summer's day in ancient Rome, a luxurious litter is solemnly carried in the direction of the Circus Maximus. Its occupant is neither a senator nor a lady of high birth, but at his destination he is seated on a luxurious purple cushion. The scene could be insane in our eyes, both for the viewer and for the show. It is a goose, and what you are going to see is the crucifixion of some dogs, but why did they sacrifice the dogs in front of the geese? During the siege of Rome, one day at dusk, the Gauls cautiously and silently climbed a hill to launch the final attack. The sentinels and the dogs that had to guard the perimeter had fallen asleep, but the invaders ran into some unexpected guards. The geese, who, frightened, made a great ruckus and woke up the Romans, who were able to repel the attack. The memory of that humiliation remained in the memory of the Romans, so it was instituted as an expiatory ritual, the sacrifice of the dogs of the capital for the failure of their predecessors centuries ago. And all this ritual was done under the gaze of the sacred geese, treated with all honors. And the rats? Do they disgust you as much as they do me? Well, with them you can also form armies for the benefit of man. As it happened in the Second World War, where an army of rats collaborated with the Soviets in Stalingrad by eating the electrical wiring of the German tanks of the 22nd Division. For several months, the German panzers sat idle in the field, sheltered in deep trenches and protected with straw from the imminent frost. Fuel was scarce, so they saved it and didn't start the engines at all. On November 19, 1942, the Red Army launched Operation Uranus to attack Nazi forces. The 22nd Panzer Division was ordered to move immediately. That's when the unexpected problems started. Some of the tanks just wouldn't start, while others would break down just starting up. The reason for the breakdowns was the mice from the straw, which ate all the electronics. As a result, at the most critical moment, only about 30 tanks were ready for combat out of the original 100. And well, you know how the Battle of Stalingrad ended. Many animals also gathered to form armies offering an impressive show. But the gathering of these birds also caused significant nuisance, to the point of becoming real urban pests. On a winter morning in 1890, 60 starlings were released into Central Park, hoping they might breed. Other bird species had already been released by the American Acclimatization Society, but none had survived. A year later, 40 more starlings were released. There wasn't much reason to think that the starlings would have any better luck than the attempts with the other species. But those hundred starlings did manage to prosper. Unfortunately, there are currently about 200 million in North America. Aggressive and corpulent, they cause devastation in habitats and in the crops of farmers. It is estimated that each year this invasive species causes almost a billion in damage to crops, particularly fruit trees. They are so cumbersome that they are among the few bird species that are not protected by law. But they are also a big problem for the world of aviation. When a group of starlings collides with an airplane the effects are devastating. 
In 1960 they caused the deadliest bird strike accident in aviation history. The birds entered the engines of a plane as it was taking off from Boston's Logan Airport, and the plane crashed, killing 62 people. In the United States, there have been several attempts to end them in more than a century. People have shot at them, tried to poison them, catch them or scare them. In the 1940s, the White House even tested loudspeakers that made owl sounds, and columns around the Capitol were outfitted with electrified wires. Nothing worked. The starling population continued to grow and became a plague. And do you know why nothing works against them? Because starlings work as a team like a whole army. The best army. So imagine if the animals decide one day to form armies against us. Can you imagine it? See you soon.